It is a story of courage and comradeship, endurance and sacrifice. Executive producers Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg recreates with fierce accuracy the true story of Easy Company, an elite World War II paratroop regiment in this 2001 TV miniseries The Band of Brothers. Hanks and Spielberg based their movie on the works of Stephen Ambrose, the military historian who documented the experiences of these heroic individuals from their training camp in Tokoa to the end of the European war in Germany in his book, A Band of Brothers. Well, the book was written by Stephen Ambrose and um, the movie was uh, directed by Tom Hanks as well as Steven Spielberg. Um, it's just in 2001, so Hanks hasn't been directing for very long. Um, he had been working on Private Ryan, Semi Private Ryan with Steven Spielberg, and Steven Spielberg has taken the um, the lead role in directing this miniseries. And um, he's not known for he's not known so much for his direction of war movies and um, and and historical movies at this point of time. At this time he had done things such as Indiana Jones, Jaws, um, E.T., War of the Worlds, um, so a lot of science fiction movies. So Jurassic Park is another one. So a lot of science fiction movies. Um, and um, he had done a couple of war movies. He had done um, he had done The Empire of the Sun at this time as well as obviously Saving Pirate Ryan. Um, he had done Munich and he has also done Shameless List um, which gives us a uh, complete picture of what, what Spielberg's about. Um, he's, he's about a lot of things um, but when it comes to movies like this he's, uh, he's very much passionate about portraying a real picture of what happened um, as well as um, bringing to the attention of the anti-Semitic behaviors of humanity up until this point. And when I say humanity, I'm specifically, um, like, you know, uh, sidelining the Nazis there. And uh, Spielberg, being a Jew himself, um, had obviously had uh, a lot of passions to actually do something that, um, that uh, showed what actually happened and what these people had to go through. And Band of Brothers presented this opportunity to actually do that because the Band of Brothers, the the miniseries in itself is actually, um, it's uh, it's based around a group of men, a band of brothers who actually went through uh, the whole of the Second World War with their um, necessary 101st Airborne Division, and um, the stories about that um, that that company of men called Easy Company. Who actually goes from Tokoa all the way to the end of the war in in Europe, and uh, along the way, uh, Spielberg and Hanks actually develop a lot of different characters. Um, the characters that we actually come we see coming through are um, basically the survivors of uh, this horrible period of time, and um, well, basically the only reason. These most majority of these characters are the survivors are basically because they survived to actually um, to um, basically give account of what happened in, through their eyes. Um, the series is based predominantly around one character though, and that is 
that is uh, the character of Richard Winters. He goes from lieutenant um, all the way to a major during the um, course of the miniseries or uh, in real life during the course of the war. He actually does that. And, uh, and the themes that actually come out um, are based around this character as well as all the other characters that, um, that actually help develop uh, an understanding of what actually happened within this company of men. A um, couple of other characters that they actually mention are Doc Rowe. That's the um, that's the um, uh, the uh, the field doctor that treats the wounded, as well as um, Richard, uh, as well as uh, Nixon. Uh, his uh, Richard Winters' best friend, um, who actually uh, sticks with him all the way through the war, uh, as well as uh, Lipton, Liebgart, Garnier, all these different characters that actually um, helps um, portray what's actually happening um, in the in the in the miniseries itself. And uh, like I said, it's actually based around Laura and Richard Winters. And what um, what Spielberg does is actually bring about um, the themes that he wants to bring out um, from within the characters itself. A um, couple of things that he actually um, really focus on um, friendship, um, responsibility and leadership, as well as, um, I would say, the uh, goodness of humanity um, within Carnage. Now, um, goodness of humanity within Carnage, you might ask me what does that mean, and basically what it is is we actually see all the way throughout the course of um, the miniseries, all 10 episodes, at least once an episode, we actually see um, within this madness, which is war, uh, incredible acts of compassion, incredible acts of bravery and self-sacrifice actually happens um, because um, because inherently people are good. Um, and, uh, and the other theme I just mentioned, which is also related, which is responsibility and leadership, because so leadership can determine whether you are going to bring out the good in people or whether you're going to bring out the bad. I guess if you put it down to it, there's, a, there's the Nazis and then there was the Allies, which um, the 101st Airborne was actually a part of. And obviously the German people themselves weren't actually bad people, it's just that they were led astray by their leader. And, um, you know, did, he took no responsibility really for the... Um, humanity of um or should i say the 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 um, well-being uh the eternal to, eternal uh, aspect of of his people that he was leading he was leading them basically um to do bad things um not just in the eyes of god but also in the eyes of fellow man um whilst leadership of the allies um uh, they fought for the um betterment of others uh, to free the slaves, to um, stop persecution, to um, to stop fascist movements. So, in in a way, they they were the good guys. They they fought for the good, um, which is things like liberty and freedom and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's a that's another thing that another theme that actually comes out, and uh, we also see um, a, like a lot of different other things such as. Um, you know, um, uh, self-sacrifice when 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 people um, literally put their lives on the line, or sometimes actually choose to actually end, choose to actually sacrifice their lives so that others may live uh, all the way throughout the throughout the um, throughout the series, and uh, it's a really cool thing. Um, these themes in itself actually raises theological questions on. Um, um, such as, you know, did God, um, did God, does God approve of war? Number one, um, a lot of people get killed in a war scenario. Um, is it is it really worth it? Is it really worth people dying? Um, these are very good questions that you ask. I mean, will somebody's eternity be affected um, by their acts during the war? Um, we see in the first episode Bill Garnier uh, incredibly upset because his brother just died, his actual real brother just died and he takes it out on the first group of Germans who comes along and he just he literally 
<laughs> in his words, he wastes them all. And um, and he's a devout Catholic now. How does that affect his eternity? All these questions actually comes up during the course of this uh, mini series, and very interesting. Um, personally, I would say, obviously, this is uh, probably a uh, um, ethical uh, class question or topic, but um, I reckon ethically, um, well, basically, you know, more people die, and uh, and they die for a cause, and that cause is either good or bad, and that's determined by their leaders, and that is what I think the movie is actually trying to. And the ministry is actually trying to actually portray as well. The um, movie itself is actually done really, really well. Um, we see that uh, the um, the background music actually really helps to um, really set the mood and set the tone of what's actually happening. Like, for instance, if it is a if it's a scary scene, we actually see a, a, a something that actually uh, pick up really quick, kind of. Um, soundtrack going on or if it's something somber like somebody had passed away or or it's a bad news or whatever we see um, the directors have actually used music in a really really good way um, it, the special effects is unbelievable um, I actually uh, did some research on how they actually made the bombs and so on and so forth I was wondering if they used live rounds live ammunition it turns out no they actually had this contraption where they they um, bury uh, this uh, uh, compressed air cylinder where at a trigger uh, well at the switch of a button it will actually just blow up air and everything that's actually inside or on top of it like uh, sand and all that kinds of stuff will actually just blow up and it's completely safe but it looks like they're actually throwing grenades and explosions are going off and shells have landed and so on and so forth so the special effects is brilliant, the way they actually um, use the characters to also um, do uh, to actually um, communicate um, what they're trying to communicate is uh, again amazing. The props and costumes are incredible, the guns and everything look like that looks very real. Um, of course it wouldn't be um, because it's, uh, it's, it's probably a safety hazard, I don't know actually. Uh, I'm guessing it wouldn't be, um, but they look really real. And uh, well, I'm a pretty much a little bit of a history buff, so I know the the clothing and everything was just spot on. Um, also, I love the way um, both Spielberg and Hanks actually uses um, just camera techniques of how to pan in on a situation. There's one situation in episode nine where um, where they actually start the episode with a uh, violin playing, well, basically a, an orchestra playing Beethoven in in the middle of uh, <laughs> debris. But they actually, at first they actually pan very much into the violin, and and then um, this beautiful music start coming out, and then they start up panning out, and and slowly and sl slowly, little by little, you can actually see the carnage that's actually around. Um, the whole area that's actually been bombed to smithereens and dead bodies lying around everywhere. Um, people, the German people, actually cleaning up um, as a way of punishment because of like the atrocities that had happened in that town. The uh, you know the army had actually made them clean up. So all these things that's bad is actually happening within this, and they they're doing it all to <laughs> to. And the sound of Beethoven, and uh, it's like mind blowingly beautiful at the same time. So, yeah, they, they mm. use all the tools that's uh, at their disposal really, really well to uh, paint a great picture. Um, now, if I was to actually rate this movie, um, I'm gonna have to give it, I reckon, a nine, nine and a half out of ten because I thoroughly enjoyed it, I thought it was brilliant in the way the message that it was actually bringing as well as how it was brought um, all the tools that they used to actually uh, communicate the message um, the theological um, or ethical dilemmas that was actually put forward to keep the um, um, audience engaged um, very well thought out brilliant very well done movie so I would give it a 9 out of 10 at least 
Um, and um, if you haven't watched the movie, I would definitely, uh, if you haven't watched the series, I would def definitely recommend you to do so, Andrew. And I have the whole set, so if you want it, let's just, you know, let me know. I'll lend it to you. Okay. Um, that's my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.